I not take broken covenants lightly. In 2010, God is calling for His church to align with covenant-keeping heartbeats. No matter how painful a situation gets, when we make a covenant, we have to keep that covenant. Now again, I realize that there's situations and every situation has to be looked at separately, but it can't be taken lightly. If, if there happens to be a need for a person to get out of a marriage, for them to be kept safe, it, it cannot be regarded lightly. And especially if you decide to leave your spouse because you're involved with some other chick or some other guy and you want someone better and you think the grass is greener on the other side, you, you, you can't just step into that and then expect the body to swallow that and say it's okay. It's perverse, it's sick, and it's disgusting before God and before man. He says it right here. He doesn't like it. He hates it, and, and it's just a no-go with him. But I tell you, if we continue to compromise our standards in covenants, it's going to hurt the nations. It's going to hurt the next generation. Because when you break covenants like that, you're inviting curse, not only on your own life, but on the sphere of influence around you. And if there's enough of a tipping point that creates a critical mass in a nation, curse can come on an entire nation. Later on, in the book of Malachi, the prophet talks about the spirit of Elijah, which is a prophetic confrontational spirit, must come to bring alignment again, lest the Lord smite the land with a curse. I know that this is maybe not the... The, the word you wanted to hear for 2010. But I'll say if we will align and get ourselves honoring the covenant of God and the word of God in 2010, then blessing will come. For those of you that are having troubled marriages, fight as best you can for it. Fight with everything you have. Don't just think that far away fields look greener. Don't think that way. Don't let the enemy pull you away from a covenant that you made before God and man. Be faithful to your covenant. I know a woman of God who had such a difficult marriage. Her husband was not treating her well. Um, he was very narcissistic in nature. He was, I would say, even close to emotionally abusing, maybe on the borderline there. But she determined that she was going to pray through, set her boundaries well, but pray through and love her husband to life. And it hasn't been easy. But she's had breakthrough in the marriage, but also her own life before God has been blessed in issues of her own life. And so God honors it when we, we go through the hard places. God kept covenant with us. It wasn't easy for Jesus to, to lay down his life for a people who rebelled against him, who didn't treat him well, who bashed his face in, who scourged him till his, his, his guts were exposed, who nailed him to the cross. That wasn't easy for him, but everything in him spoke love because he's a covenant-keeping God, and he wants us to be just like him. Let our love increase. For each other in the body. You know, we break covenants in the body all the time. We're to love each other, and yet we don't. And God wants us to keep righteousness, to stay with one another, even if we're in disagreement. You know, people that are, are sinners in the body, I love them. But you know what? God's word is different for those outside the camp and those in the camp. You just read your Bible in 2010 and you'll find that God says things about sinners in Zion. He says even in the New Testament, he says, if someone is in sin and they're not repentant, don't even eat with such a one. Separate yourself from them until they repent. Some people say, well, that's not love, but if God who is love tells you to do that, it must be love. Amen? So let's stay on the word in 2010. Let's devour this word, get that word deep within our heart, and keep our covenants. I bless each and every one of your marriages. For those of you that have already got broken marriages, I pray for restoration of your life and all the brokenness around you. But start today with a clean start and make things right before God and before man. And let's raise up a standard in 2010. Let's not lower it. Let's raise up a standard. Amen.